this short video I'm going to look at example 10 and 14 just to explain um, how an interrupt can be caused when you press a button which is connected to interrupt zero an external interrupt so first thing I want to discuss is <coughs> I've in my pre previous videos I have spoken about interrupt service routines um, in this program you'll see we uh, I've also mentioned that we're going to include a header file by the name of interrupt.h and inside that header file you have got certain interrupt vector names so you have to make use of these specific names this is found on page 346 of the book of Matsi and Nahimi and Nahimi and it's table 10-3 um, for instance if I've got an external interrupt request 0 that's interrupt 0 I must make use of int 0 underscore vect if it's interrupt uh, 1 it's int 1 underscore vect etc so these are the names that I must use in my examples um, in this specific video I'm going to make use of int 0 vect and um, in some to follow I will maybe make use of this pc int 0 vect underscore vect so that's just important to see that let's go to the program that I've written for this microcontroller the AVR which is the Atmega 328P using Atmos Studio as I've said first thing we must include uh, the interrupt.h header file uh, in this case uh, I've just declared the var there VAR and in my program in my while one loop you can see I will constantly just load 12 into var um, it's actually doing nothing it's it means this is your main program so it will wait here it will execute this the whole time and only if there's an interrupt then it will jump to the interrupt service routine so in my case I've special specified the interrupt service routine at the top of the main you could have done that at the bottom of main also it doesn't really matter um, but this is where I have specified it and as I've said we're going to make use of uh, external interrupt zero request so this is why in zero underscore vect will be used as the name in the program in zero underscore vect here it is so this is what you have to make use of so what I've done here is I've just got a Proteus a Proteus uh, design here and this Proteus design you can see I've only got a switch connected to to ground here which means my input pin is actually inside that pin will be uh, the pull-up resistance will be activated um, this is why I haven't got any resistance value connected yet so all I want to do with this thing is the following um, I want if if this if this uh, switch is not pressed that means the input to PD2 which is now used as int 0 interrupt 0 it's high if it's not pressed the moment that you press it, it there will be a, a falling edge or a yeah, falling edge from high to low and then I just want to change the output of this LED the output status of the LED uh, if you release it if you release the button or the switch that means um, nothing will happen because it's not falling edge then then it's going to be rising edge so nothing will happen so let's see if in the program what did I do there so first of all I just declared again um, uh, PB5 as an output this step was actually not necessary to make uh, PD2 as an input which is now I'm going to use it as interrupt 0 PD2 is interrupt 0 but it was not necessary because if it switches on it's all zeros in any case in DDR uh, making them inputs so the values in DDR will be zeros but making it an input um, yeah this was necessary to be done the pull-up resistance is activated on PD2 um, and in this specific as I've said each and every peripheral each and every uh, possible interrupt source has got its own control registers this is the external interrupt mask register and we've seen in the previous videos that I must activate uh, int 0 I must make that one inside this specific register that is to activate e interrupt 0 so this is why I've made this bit of 1 inside this register then also we must tell this device um, must the, the the interrupt occur on the low level or the falling edge or the rising edge etc in one of my previous videos I've shown that if you load this with 0 2 the interrupt will be on the falling edge 
and as I've said in my previous videos also you must enable the I bit in SREG it's in, in the status register but because you've got the interrupt.h here that header file it understands what you mean if you see if you say S E I and uh, open curly open bracket closing bracket round brackets then it means what happens here is I is set in the S register so basically what will happen is we're gonna sit the whole time the program will sit here and execute basically just loading var which is not doing anything at, in any case except from, from for loading the value and if the condition occurs where the pulse goes from um, from high to low in other words falling edge then we will jump into this interrupt service routine so in reality what happens as i've said in my previous videos wherever you sit maybe this program could this could have been a long program inside this while one you will jump out of there it will actually go to the vector table and then the vector table will basically direct you to this interrupt service routine so when you get to the interrupt service routine what is this thing doing here it says you must write basically what this one here means is it's exclusive ORing um, bit number five in port B and exclusive ORing something actually means you toggle it so if it was a one it would become a zero if it's a zero it would become a one so this is the program I have built this already before if I go to my Proteus design and I start this um, I've loaded the program already in here in the microcontroller and as you can see at this stage the LED is off if I press the button it means I am activating because just look at this this int 0 pin here let me uh, uh, get this a little bit bigger you will see that it's high uh, because of the internal pull up resistance it's high this is why it's red if I press it you will see the button this pin going blue meaning low and it will also change the status of the LED in other words toggle it so if I press it you will see as exactly what I've meant uh, I'm just holding in the the push button on the mouse it changed to a blue which is a zero and that one is changing to a high switching the LED toggled in other words as you can see the button is still pressed here and if I now release it you will see that again this one changed back to high but if I if I release it here there's a rising edge this thing should not toggle on the rising edge this is why the status of this LED remains exactly 100% the same um, and this is the operation of ex example for uh, 1014 very simple straightforward as soon as you press it again you can see here it's toggling from high to low again if you release it nothing will happen if you press it again there's a falling edge again and it will change status this is how this specific program operates then so in the next video i will explain example 1015 thank you